In today's video, I'm going to show you how I created this piece of digital illustration in Photoshop, as well as sharing some tips and pointers of things that I would have done to improve the artwork overall. And if you'd like to get access to this Photoshop file, you can click the link in the description. It'll take you straight to my website, The Composite Workshop, where you can gain access to my Photoshop files completely for free. Now, without further ado, let's dive right in. Now, before we hop into this artwork today, I just wanted to preface by saying, I'm sorry I haven't uploaded in a while. I've actually been deep into playing Elden Ring as of late. I've died a lot of times and I'd love to get your comments and feedback of what I should do with my build. I'm currently uh, rocking Vagabond, but so just a side note on that part. So, all right, for this artwork, this is another one of my older projects that I've done. And if we look over here down in the layers panel, you can see that there's really not a whole lot, or if any, barely any, masking going on. It's because at the time when I created this, I didn't even know about masking, where you could take uh, an adjustment layer that has a mask and then paint out different things. Might be hard to see, but as you can see here, you know, I didn't even know about that sort of thing. And so a lot of my layers were made destructively. Like this, for example, this little cabin doesn't have a mask to it. If I wanted to adjust it later on, I couldn't do that because I already destructively edited it so that I couldn't go back and change it if I wanted to. So that's one thing right off the bat. I want to say if you guys do not know about using masks for your layers, please learn masks. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to toggle everything off so I can show how I built it all up. So I brought in this forest I found from Pexels or Unsplash, both royalty-free websites. Um, then I brought in this UFO. I got it off a of Sketchfab, took a screenshot, and then cut it out and brought it in. I added a window pane that's going to come later. And then I brought in this cabin area that had a different background throughout the window, basically cut it out. And unfortunately, I did it destructively, which you should never do that as a Photoshop sin. <laughs> um, then I added some glow to the UFO. I found a point light and I basically just changed it from normal to screen. And then I added my subject. I wanted to convey this idea that there was a kid that was sleeping and then heard something out its window and then was standing on some books to try and see what was going on. So I added some books here if I could find it. Yeah, these books right here I got off of Envato Elements. I adjusted the angle and placed it into the scene. So I did that and I placed it beneath the subject layer and then I started adding all the effects. I've said this before in previous uh, layer breakdown videos that really it looks complex when you look at the final result, but there's actually only a handful of assets here. We have the cabin, we have our subject, the books that it's standing on, the background, and the UFO. So I started with this background and added a hue adjustments layer, basically just toning down the lightness, brought in the UFO, same thing with the hue and saturation, and then I added some color and increased the levels, added a window pane, the same thing is set to screen as well. You can find these textures usually on Google Images. Added the point light, like I said earlier, and then adjusted a little bit of the hue. Brought in the cabin area where I cut out the window and then started adding different adjustments layers to match the lightness from outside. Darkened up the window shades, started adding a glow coming from the UFO into the cabin area. And then I added a light coming from the main beam on the side of the UFO. I changed the color to match the color coming off the rest of the UFO. I added a shadow underneath the books. And what I basically did when I first created the shadow, I basically took a black brush and I changed it to multiply and then lowered the opacity down to about 30%. But what I would have done differently is I probably just would have used an exposure layer and just masked it out instead. All right, then I added some levels to the book, changed the color to match the light coming from the UFO, added a hue adjustments layer, and a little bit more shadows. Then I added a photo filter over everything, added the subject back in, 
added some more shadows, hue saturation, and just color matching the rest of the scene. Added some more shadow coming from the back of the character, and then I added a slight particle effect, again using screen and changing the opacity. Last but not least, I added a camera raw filter over everything to give a lot more contrast to the scene, and then I added some highlights to the character's hair as well. So that's basically the layer breakdown for this project. Again, this is one of my early, early projects, so everything down here is very clustered, out of order, and not really optimized very well. But again, like I said, what I would have done differently for this project overall is to make sure I use masks on my layers, converting things to smart objects and using the masks, as well as when I first published uh, or posted this on my Instagram, it looked more like this, but without the, um, the highlights on the hair. I added that much later on. That's why it's not really um, in the layers panel. And I would have probably just used exposure instead of a black brush using multiply. It kind of makes things a little bit more difficult than it needs to be. So, but again, like I said, there are many different ways to achieve a similar look. Uh, it's all about what you feel works for you. And I really love the way this turned out overall because this looks like something out of a sci-fi movie or you can, like you could use it for like a book cover for some sci-fi novel. And that's why I included it into the composite workshop. Whenever you sign up to become a member, you get access to these type of files. And granted, it's, it might not be the best uh, setup with it being an earlier project, but you could totally use this as a template to incorporate your own characters or maybe change out the UFO or the scenery to do whatever you want and create your own scene and make it unique to yourself. So another thing I would have done differently to improve this artwork overall is to actually add a lens flare to this UFO. Now it already kind of has a point light, but I really feel like adding a lens flare would really create that cinematic feel and just give it that extra oomph that it actually needs. So this is usually something you'll do whenever you have the final render all put together. It needs to have something completely uniform. So you can either create a copy of your final or you can bring in your camera raw render right after it is all completely finished. I'm gonna click on this one and then we're gonna go over to filter, render, and lens flare. Now, there are a bunch of different types that we could use that look pretty good. I like this uh, 105 millimeter prime. I've already centered it up to where the point light is on the UFO. And just like that, I really feel like that creates a little bit more oomph to the project. And if we wanted to get rid of, let's say, these little other flares right here and just wanted to keep this main one, we just click on the mask, make sure it's set to black, and just remove it. That way, it's less distracting, it shows more importance to the UFO, and really brings it all together. So that's going to be it for today's video, guys. I hope you all enjoyed, and remember to like, comment, and subscribe so you don't miss a single upload, and I'll catch you all in the next one.